Welcome back to Ordinal Revolution. My name is Shizzy. On this channel, we cover the entire Ordinal ecosystem. What's up, guys? We have another amazing founder interview for you guys today. We have a really cool project that we, we actually came across. It's called Star Breeders. It's really cool. They have an Ordinal project and a potential uh, BRC20. Uh, they're going to be doing something with that. It is not um, out yet. I mean, it's fully minted, but it's in their possession, and they're going to be doing something pretty cool with it. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into what they are, how they started, and and everything. Um, it's a really cool project. It's brand new. Uh, it's something that, that's, that's been around not, 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 that, not that long. So it's something that you guys can kind of get your head around just like we are in this one. So let me bring in my partner, as always, get this show started. Mr. Yago B. What's up, buddy? Uh oh. That's Gotta turn good. off the mute. Gotta turn off the mute. <laughs> What's up? What up, Shizzy? What up? Yeah, man. So we had, we had really good, really good um discussion today. Um, really cool project. Uh what do you think? You know, uh, I, I actually like whenever there's a BRC20 that is connected with an ordinal project, right? It's like two of the best worlds in, for us. You know, yeah. we cover every aspect, every corner, every inch of the Bitcoin ordinal space. And so, but the two biggest ones are obviously the NFT collections or the ordinal collections, digital artifacts, you yep. say that correctly. And then the BRC20s, right? So, Anytime you can combine those together, I think it just brings that extra juice to it, right? Because yeah. you have uh, people, communities in both sides. So I'm excited to learn about what they're going to do because it seems like they're going to have some sort of cool little connection here. Yep. And that's what the show is all about, guys. We're, we just try to find builders and kind of um, kind of see what, the, what they're doing. And, um, you know, everything on the show, nothing on the show is financial advice. Obviously, you guys know that. And we use, uh, use this as, as like a learning, like a learning mechanism. So you guys can kind of figure out what you guys want to do in your uh your journey here in ordinals so let's get yep. the, let's get the show started let's bring in star breeders tommy welcome to order revolution sir hey what's up everyone hi shizzy hi yagobi hey what's, what's up? up happy to be here uh, yeah thanks for joining us yeah awesome awesome guys um yeah, i can't wait to tell to talk a little bit about the project and i'm pretty excited to get invited here um thanks a lot yeah. for that yeah man all right so let's get right into it so on this show you know we love projects we're definitely going to dig right in, in the star breeders uh but we like to get to know the person and the people behind it so you can, you can kind of give us your, your background as far back as possible can kind, of, kind of lead us up to your crypto journey Sure. Um, let me just uh, put on the um, screen. So, Amen. yeah. So, um, am I sharing it now? I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah. There, you there you go. There you go. All right. Here is some of our ordinals. Um, so, let me talk a little bit. Uh, um, well, about myself, I got in crypto in uh, in uh, like for the 2017 bull market. That was the first time I entered the space uh, and the ordinals haven't been anywhere near back then. And uh, nobody would have thought what uh, what would happen with that space in, in the last uh, like 10 months or something. So, yeah, um, I had this project um, um, kind of ready for uh, a great uh, mothership to um, to launch into space or to the moon or however you, you want to say it so and when ordinals came up it was totally clear to me that i want to i want to go for that yeah. because uh, bitcoin the big mothership this is just uh, super exciting to have art uh, on there to have uh, collections on there so yeah, yeah. So what, what what about you? Um, how 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 do you start? Like what 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 are you all about? Yeah. So um, well, I actually um, um, I I was like working in the multimedia um, business for a few years, and also I was always a, a creative person, creative guy. So um, I I'm into music production and uh, into writing, and. Uh, philosophy as well so uh, this is like and and kind of the writing and philosophy and and the story behind uh, what we are building is like uh what really um is uh what matters in this project and this is where i bring myself in and yeah 
Um, I always had a fascination about the singularity, uh, the technological singularity hypothesis, and um, and also, of course, astrophysics and uh, space quantum uh, mechanics, um, relativity theory, and um, I kind of like merged all of that together um, in this community. And um, this is what um, I built the narrative uh, around with that. That's awesome. I actually really, really love like quantum physics and stuff like that. So I get kind of, you know, why you're passionate about it because it's very interesting. Um, so before you came over to Bitcoin, um, in terms of the ordinal space, where did you spend most of your time before that? Were you more on the Ethereum chain? Were you on Arbitrum? Any other chains or um, what was your experience with that? Um, I was actually in the first bull market, I was just uh, investing a bit. Um, I was just like uh, buying some tokens. I was blogging on Steemit uh, back then on the on the blogging uh, platform um, and which is now Hive. Um, and uh, this is where I was most active. And uh, because I was uh, working as a writer and I was like, I was like uh, feeling fine about writing and uh, bringing stories and I was doing some news on there, stuff like that. And uh, then the last bull market, um, I uh, did some other project. I had like a um, NFT project, which was on, on uh, we, we, we did some NFTs on Ethereum and some on the WAX blockchain. Um, yeah, so that's where we were at home. We were doing like cartoons, like a cartoon series, stuff like that. And yeah, so that was like what I did before. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, you said that you, you built out star breeders. It was kind of like this, this project built on your passion and what interests you the most with like quantum physics and, you know, singularity and all that stuff. But what made you decide, okay, you know, ordinals, that's, that's where I want to be. It, you know, was it, sure. was it, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, uh, I just, I don't know where it popped up. I think it was on, on former uh, Twitter. Um, I was reading into it and it was like in the first days, I wasn't really like, uh, checking, uh, like what was going on when like the first few thousand got minted and everything was very difficult. Um, like you had your own node and everything. So, um, but then soon there was the first like inscription services popping up and I, I kind of immediately knew that this is something very special. And, uh, and uh, I was just 100% sure that this is the right place. I think that um, Ordinals, it has some really special vibes to it. It's really something about the um, knowing that you're on the mother chain, that you are like, where it all started and uh and um it just has some some special kind of magic to it it's hard to describe but it's really like more a, a vibey thing um i mean obviously in the technological perspective there's much uh there's much easier ways to uh, mint collections and uh much more uh i don't know um advanced uh, blockchains to work with but Bitcoin is just different. So that's actually it. There is no other reason to be honest. It's just great to be on the ordinal space. I 100% understand what you're saying. You know, um, there is a vibe here. Um, and I think, you know, everybody that has been over here has experienced that feeling. Uh, Community is a little bit different over here from my experience than it is on, you know, traditional EVM chains. Um, yeah. when it comes to DeFi and NFT collections and stuff. So I get that hundred percent. So how long have you been in the ordinal space though? Like, like you said, you missed some of the first inscriptions. Have you been here since like, you know, February or like more, did you get in and say, okay, this is where I want to, I want to experiment and dabble over here in the summer is when you got in. Can you talk about when you came in? Sure. Um, yeah, I was actually pretty early. Um, I think the first time I noticed uh, and heard about ordinals was when the Bitcoin punks uh, were minting. Oh, wow. So that, that was February. 
and I was like, I think it was mid February and I was like kind of watching the space and, uh, and checking it out. And then I actually started also like doing some research on, on, on what to do there. And then I realized, Hey, this is, uh, I gotta get in now. This is like a, a chance in a lifetime to be that early and, uh, in, in such a new, uh, um, how do you say a new, uh, economy or new, uh, ecosystem. ecosystem, exactly. Um, so we minted, um, I think it was second or third on Ma of March. We minted our first round of eight ordinals because we are like, um, I think I will talk about the project itself later, but we mint in Fibonacci numbers. So the first round was eight ordinals and then 13 and then 21. But the first one was minted uh, um, on 2nd or 3rd of March. And we were like, uh, the first one was like, I think 270,000 was the first inscription we had. Yeah, so, it's looking like it was before that. It's looking like it was, uh, was that 255,000, right? Which is pretty amazing. So, something like that, exactly. So we were one of the first original collections. Um, there was other collections like the Bitcoin punks and also the apes. But they are not original. They are they are like uh, copycats. So yeah. um, I think there was only a handful, or maximum ten or twenty original collections before us. So we are actually we have been pretty early, and um, yeah, since then um, we never regret it, and it's it's a it's an amazing ride to be on the on the mothership. Yeah. All right. I was going to say, like, I'm glad that you, sh you, 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 Shizzy, you brought up the inscription number because it, like, when you, when you show an inscription like 200K, I feel like that's like skin in the game, right? Super well, early. It, it's kind of early. Um, I wish I, I would have done a week earlier because then we would have been below 100K. Um, yeah. but, but still, everything below a million, I think it's, it's still early. 100%. And, um, it's, a. Uh, yeah, it's like that's the interesting thing about inscription numbers that uh, you can always see like the facts, right? It's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, let's let's start digging into uh, uh, Star Breeders. Like, what is it, and um, what's the team like, and everything all about it? Mm -hmm. um, of course. Um, so um, yeah, I already talked about uh, it's an early collection, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, I also talked a little bit about the, the narrative, so mm -hmm. which is really important with us. You can see um, these ordinals, they all have like stars as they are star breeders. And um, you can see different star types. And it starts with uh, proto stars and it goes all the way up to red giants and, uh, and white dwarfs and supernovae and neutron stars and then the black holes. And um, so we have that big narrative, which is uh, um, the multiverse in terms of we have the astrophysical or the physical um, universe or multiverse. And we have the, also the digital um, realm or the metaverse. And um, both have these singularities. And I think this is what's really interesting for me personally and um this is what we build our narrative about so um you can see star breeders as multi-dimensional entities who are um kind of like masters of their own reality and um yeah um it's uh, uh i think pretty interesting to dive into that and um the you, you might also have heard about the Kardashev scale, um, which is the civilization types. Um, it's like a concept from, a, um, I think it was a science fiction novelist, Kardashev, and he, he was saying that um, um, humans um, are a, civ a civilization zero or type zero civilization, which are like biological entities that are harvesting the energy of their mother planet and this goes all the way up to harvesting um, um, a full star, which is this uh, um, type two civilization. And it goes up to type five, I think, 
um, where you harvest a whole galaxy's um, <clears throat> a whole galaxy's energy. So this is a concept how to classify um, civilizations in the multiverse. And um, this also kind of plays into this because uh, star breeders are exactly that. They are like, um, when you're in control of a black hole, you're in control of a galaxy, right? As we all know that the Milky Way uh, has at its center a huge uh, black hole. So um, that's the um, narrative. Also, we have technology, of course. That's why we are uh, diving into um, singularity technologies like AI and blockchain. And um, we are combining that because we see um, um, we see it as a multiverse where it's both physical and a digital realm that we play yeah. in. And um, yeah. Um, are and you guys creating like a, a game with this? Like some of a game or something like, or just like a collection? Um, it is a collection now, but we are working on experiences. Um, okay. I, I think, uh, I, I wouldn't say 100% it's a game. It's more um, incentivized experiences because I want to come into that as well. Um, so we have two distinct things that are like really unique to us. One is that narrative I just explained about um, astrophysics and uh, the singularity. Um, and the other thing is that we, which is maybe a bit different than other Ordinals collections, um, we identify as not a, um, a closed ecosystem. And we also see Ordinals not really a closed ecosystem. We actually think that um, the, the Bitcoin blockchain is the mothership, of course. And um, there is an interplay and there is, uh, um, there is um, how do you say, it? there is interaction with other chains. Interoperability. This it, interoperability. This is how it should be in, in uh, our perspective. And what we are building is um, actually applications that um, bring that interoperability in terms of a gamified experience. So, um, um, yeah, uh, and this is going to be like a game, but it's also like a utility, you could say, because when you have um, when you have a an digital avatar um, that can travel to different realms, which is different blockchains then this is a kind of like, I think, a, a bigger perspective than just the game. I wouldn't say just because games can be everything. But um, yeah, it, it's more than, than a game. It's more like a, a experiences a utility we are working on. Gotcha. So you, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, like, uh, can you give an example of one of those experiences? Like, are you going to use the website? For that or is that what is the and ex, give me one example of one of the experiences um well this specific uh thing um we didn't announce uh, the project yet but it's it's like uh it's like a side project of star burritos we will announce in a few weeks um and um uh, it has to do with ai and it has and it has to do with the question on what do you do with your nfts um, are you going to stay on your ship or are you going to be able to travel? Like, uh, um, how was it like on the enterprise? They call it beaming or something like that. Um, and, uh, um, it's going to be something like that. I, I see it says metaverse experiences. Are you trying to integrate like bitmaps into this or just like metaverse in general? That's like, you guys are just using that term. No, we, we are also integrating bitmaps, but um, we uh, we we aim to be on different metaverses. So well. uh, bitmap, bitmaps is gonna be, of course, the centerpiece, and uh, um, but we wanna uh, we wanna create a, the option for for holders of any ordinals um, to be present on on different platforms as well. So that's that's like uh, that's one of the things we're working on, and uh, we have we have other things too. Um, there is, for example, um, 
we are of course very interested in AI because because uh, it's uh, it's related to the singularity, um, and uh, we are also looking into that, which is a, a part of uh, or it's like a technology that is not very present in ordinals at the moment, and uh, uh, we also have, have something coming up with that. Um, so this is going to be a partnership actually, and. Uh, as a part of our like open approach, um, we are also building partnerships and are uh, integrating services for our community and also others, of course. And um, because we wanna bring utility to the collection, it's not just the collection. Um, we really uh, wanna realize, we wanna, we wanna participate on building that singularity uh however it may look like so for it's example the, one, of, okay. yes, Sorry. one one of the one of the things coming in the next weeks is also is a is a partnership this is like a, a little alpha we can give um uh, uh, we have a partnership with a um with a company uh, that builds chatbots ai based chatbots and uh we are still looking into how we can int integrate and and uh, in which narrative this will work but this is something that will be available on our discord for example and uh, our ordinals holders uh, they will have free access and then we will give access to um to anybody actually and this is what also the new token uh is a utility for the new token is um, how other people can use the um, services we are building for our community. So how's that? Like, what, what do you, so you have to like basically pay in new to use it? Um, we, we are kind of like uh, still thinking about how we're going to do it. It's going to be either payments or it's going to be a staking or like okay. locking up uh, the tokens, um, kind of subscription based, something like that. But uh, we have not completely decided that at the moment. So uh, the total supply of the uh, the ordinals um, says it's three hundred and sixty two. Is that the is that the, the the max, or do you guys have plans to to create more? Um, it's not the max. Um, we have one more minting round because the total supply is 597. Okay. So um, um, because we are sticking to our Fibonacci um, sequence and uh, we have one more minting round. Yeah, so it's it's uh, we have seven yet and uh, the number eight will have 233 more ordinals coming in. Yeah, yeah. but we are, we are always minting once we minted out the last minting round. Gotcha. Could you talk a little bit about the team? How many guys are? Um, I saw Yago. If you have that, the bottom of that screen, it said that the team. I can bring it up. Uh, I have it. Sorry. Um, so, um, yeah. yes, uh, I talked. Uh, uh, so the narrative uh, I already talked about that comes from my part and also increasingly uh, the tech. Um, we have uh, our amazing designer, um, Adi, who is uh, responsible for the, for the pixels art. And um, then uh, we have our developer who is, uh, who is working uh, on all the tech stuff uh um Priyan. and then we have for the community we have also tavia and claire who are uh working on discord and on twitter and yeah that's our core team and then we we also work with collab managers and stuff like that um but this is the core team yeah gotcha when, when did you guys come up with the newt token um was that whenever you initially launched the the project and you decided okay we have a plan for this and we're going to decide when to unleash it or is that something that came more recently 
Um, it came a bit later because BRC20, the, um, the standard didn't exist when we, when we started. Um, I think uh, the BRC20 was introduced in April or May. And, uh, and uh, I think in May, we also, um, we decided to do the token. And uh, um, yeah, we found uh, the ticker NEWT, which stands for Neutron or Neutrino. And uh, you can see our symbol, which is also, um, we use the neutron star, which we also use for the, the ordinals. And um, yeah, uh, it was a really crazy time back then with a lots of projects popping up. So uh, we were waiting a bit for the right moment to start it. And then um, kind of the whole space cooled off until it came back now in uh, in November, and then then now it it was clear for us that the time is now for the token. So that's yeah. why we're launching now. It's actually coming up very soon. Um, I don't I don't know when you uh, when this is going on air, but uh, the launch is on fifteenth. Um, it's gonna be a, a first. We're gonna have a free private mint, and then uh, from eighteenth of December, it's gonna be a public free mint. So yeah. And it's uh, it's gonna be uh, our minting launch pad is uh, Ortswap. Ortswap, okay. So, so check a... it out, and yeah. uh, um, I, I will make a shout out later. But we are also like you can check our social media um, for whitelist spots. Uh, we are doing this stuff in uh, for that for the, the for moment. the private for the private mint or launch. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So yeah. So what, what made you guys decide to go with uh, Ord Swap? Um, we actually were looking for a, a launch pad and we, and we just contacted them and they were ready to do it. So uh, it happened pretty fast. Gotcha. Yeah, it was yeah. quite spontaneous. Yeah, I just asked because Ord Swap is kind of, I feel like they've been out of the mix in terms of marketplaces and maybe they've backed off of being a secondary marketplace and just only are focusing on Launchpad. Maybe, maybe I, I don't know if that's the case, but interesting choice. Um, so you said the 15th, you guys are going to do a whitelist kind of uh, like private mint type of situation in and then public. So we haven't seen one of these in a while, right? Right. Shizzy. I think the last I one, I think, yeah, I think it was MXRC, and then there was another one, wasn't there? I think there was, was three the punk, in a row. The punk, punk token. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The punk token also did yeah. that. So this will be interesting to see how this goes because you know um, we haven't seen one in a while, and and obviously like some, the very first one did very well with OXBT using the mm -hmm. Launchpad um, MXRC, and then um, Punk, and then it just kind of stopped after that. My right, we didn't really see any after that, and then this will be the first one since then. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see kind of what how you guys do this. Are you worried about bots, or is that something that you guys have already planned out? Or you know, obviously that's going to be you know that's got to be on your mind. Well, we are we are trusting to our, to the launch pad in in mm -hmm. terms of this. Um, I I am to be honest, I'm I'm not a, a super technical expert on that. But they are obviously so. Um, uh, I, I totally trust them, and we have a, we have a pretty strong limit. Um, so um, it's so the the minting uh, the amount is is uh, for the public mint is relatively small. So um, and um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll just, see. I hope it's gonna go fine. Um, uh, I am very optimistic about that. So, is this yeah. a, it, a free mint, right? Did you say that? Yes, it's it's a free mint. Yes. Okay. Awesome. And uh, how much of the allocation is there, and how much is the is the team keeping, and how much are you guys giving away? Yeah, let me let me open the um, the allocation. So we we're doing Fibonacci everywhere, and same applies to the allocation. Um, let me just scroll on, uh, on my Twitter on that so I don't tell you something wrong. So the, the allocation, um, am I on yeah. sharing yeah. now? Yeah, yep. we so, can see it. Um, so the, the biggest allocation goes to ordinals holders, to star breeders, 
so if you hold a star breeder, depending on the stellar type, on the star type, um, you get more tokens. So if you have a mm -hmm. protostar, which is the most uh, common um, star types, you get uh, 6,765 newts, all Fibonacci numbers. That's why they are like kind of odd, uh, kind of like they look a bit chaotic, but it's the, it's the order of nature. So... Um, and then it goes up all the way to black holes, which get a much larger supply. It's like uh, almost 200,000. Mm -hmm. And um, the whitelist gets uh, um, like around 4.2K and the public mint will be 2.5K. And uh, our total supply is uh, 267 million and some, it's also a Fibonacci number. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and um for the um, token allocation, where do I have that? Um, yeah, you can. You, uh, here you can see the um, star types. So if you want to oh, ape okay. into star breeders, um, if you get a black hole, there's only eight of them and they get the largest supply. And uh, um, you can find it on our Twitter so you can recognize the star types. Gotcha. Uh, and you see it also in the uh, on uh, Ordinal's wallet uh, on the on our JSON. So uh, let me see. I, I um, bought one, by the way, while we were on the show. Oh yeah, I, awesome. Yeah, because it was a low. It's a low inscription. I just wanted one, and uh, they're pretty good price, man. You know, so I was like, yeah, yeah. The floor uh, we got a bit smashed. Um, ain't gonna lie about that. So the, the all-time high was around uh, $250. So now you can get one for, I think, $40. So it's it's really a bargain at the moment. And you get a lot of tokens. So um, you, you really have, a, have an edge when you have a star breeder for that mint. So uh, when it comes to the allocation, uh, we really want to decentralize. It's really important to us. Um, we, we have some 8% for team and maintenance. Um, because we we also for some future project, for example, we need to run our own node. Uh, um, this is uh, and uh, also other stuff uh, because uh, the AI stuff we are doing uh, that all uh, requires some money. So we have eight percent for that and for the team, and then twenty one percent go to the DAO treasury. This is also important. If you hold a star breeder, you're part of the singularity DAO. And, uh, and the DAO will actually be the beneficiary of all the projects we are doing. And um, uh, also they will get 21% um, for future projects and for investments into uh, metaverse real estate and stuff like that. And um, so, but it's also owned by the holders. So it's also kind of, uh, part of the decentralization, if you want to see it like that. And uh, the NUTS token itself, uh, we will have a private mint for the private mint 34%. And, uh, and uh, if it's not getting minted, it's going to go all to the public sale, uh, which has also 21%. And then um, we have another 21% for the staking pool. So also these tokens are going to decentralize if you if you want to stake. So it's uh, it's actually the almost everything is going uh, to the community. Gotcha. All right, man. It's been it's been pretty pretty amazing. Uh, your project's pretty cool. Definitely want to uh, take a further look. Um, this is part of the show where we kind of give you the stage to kind of uh, talk to our community, kind of say whatever you want um, in this couple of minutes. So it's yours. All right. Um, I think I I already <laughs> said almost everything. Yeah. Um, how, I just want to say. Oh, so go. I was, excuse I was me. Say, what's What's the best way for someone to find you? Yeah. Well, the best way go on find us on X. Um, Starbreeder DAO. Um, Starbreeders. You can see it uh, on the shared screen. You can buy you can buy our um, ordinals on Magic Eden on Ordinals Wallet on ArtSwap. Um, I think also on Gamma. We have some, 
and um, yeah the new token will be available very soon it's gonna be a christmas mint so uh be ready it's a free mint it, um so um we are on our discord we are uh and on our twitter we are running um whitelist uh, some whitelist giveaways also with some partners of ours and um yeah um another thing is we love bitmaps and digital matter theory so if you're into that you're gonna have an edge too and we may be gonna be announcing something soon about uh whitelist spots if you hold bitmaps maybe <laughs> very maybe um yeah just be alerted in the next couple of days um there's a lot coming up and um yeah i think uh i want to say thank you to the whole community because um it's amazing what what happened in the last uh in in 2023 from zero to a multi-billion uh, dollar ecosystem and we are in there um we are really proud about that and uh it's amazing yeah we love ordinals awesome that's awesome well again thank you so much for joining us and uh, we wish you the best of luck thank you very much guys that was Alrighty. fun <laughs> definitely all right tommy take it easy we'll, we'll talk to you soon see you tommy. cool all right see you bye guys bye well that was fun yeah different yeah, yeah. You, you know i think i nerd out about that kind of stuff so yeah. I love like the, you know, the physics, uh, you know, quantum physics and singularity theory and all that stuff. Right. Um, and, and so I think it's cool. It's definitely different than your typical. But here, hey, look, I look at it like this. I, I picked up a, a sub 500K ordinal for cheap just now. And, and it, it was because I learned about this uh, collection on our show. Our show yeah. taught me something today. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, it was fun. I definitely. Mean, that's what the show's about, man. It's about all the research and kind of learning about these projects that no one really knew what would exist. And, you know, like I said before, you know, nothing is financial advice, uh, but definitely take a look at, at everything all over. You know, we really want to explore the, the, the ordinals and explore every part of it. And that's what we do on the show. So hundred percent, hundred percent. So guys, uh, look out for uh star breeder. They're uh, the token newt. They're going to be using Ord swap for their yep. launch December 15th. Um, you know, check it out, just research it. Right. And then yeah. make an adult decision. Like we always say on our show. Yep. Yep. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you cannot watch, you can definitely listen. We're on Apple, we're on Spotify, we're on all streaming platforms and, uh, we appreciate you guys watching. Peace. Peace.